Această emisiune este sponsorizată de Centrul de Carte Străină SITCA. Good afternoon everyone. I hope you are as excited as I am to embark on this incredible learning journey together. My name is Andrea Moldoveanu and I am absolutely happy to be your teacher this session. I am a teacher of English at secondary school number 40 and I have been teaching English for more than 12 years. With a passion for education and a commitment to your success, I am here to support and inspire you every step of the way. Get ready for our lessons and thought-provoking discussions. Buckle up, because the adventure starts now. Now, I will introduce my new students for today, Raisa and Irina. Hello, girls. How are you? Hi. Hello. Raisa, Hi. how was your day at school? It was great. Irina, what about you? Mine was too. Did you get any marks, any good marks? Yes, I did. Okay, so your marks were better than Irina's marks? I think so. Okay, so our lesson is entitled Adjectives. We'll talk about comparative and superlative. So, uh, by the end of the lesson, my students will be able to identify adjectives in the story, write simple sentences containing adjectives, and make sentences with comparatives and superlatives. Now, Raisa, you'll have to read the story carefully. And after that, we'll have to identify the describing words. The little fish and the big fat bean. One day, a little fish was walked swimming in the river with her mother. The, ma the water was clear and warm, but the little fish wanted to swim faster and go farther. So the little fish swam on and on till, the, till she reached the river bank. She looked and there, growing on the bank, she saw a large bean stuck on the bean stocking of big fat bean. The little fish thought that she had never seen anything so fine. Hello, Fatso, she called on the bean. Hello, Midge, the bean called back. The little fish felt very hurt that she should be called that. That uh, she burst into tears and hurried off to complain to her mother about it. Oh, mother, she will. The big fat bean called me Midge. Of all things, I'm not as tiny as that, am I? I even have a tail. Perhaps you hurt the bean's feelings yourself in some way, said the mother fish. Oh, no, mother dear, I didn't. Well, let's swim back to the bank again, and I'll ask the bean what made him say such a thing. And, yeah, and the two of them, mother and daughter, made for the bank. Good morning, Mr. Bean, the mother fish called. Good morning to you too, Mr. Fish, the bean called back. Tell me, Mr. Bean, what made you hurt my little daughter's feelings? What did you call Midge? She only got what she deserved. She called me Fatso, so I called her Midge in return. Okay, thank you. Irina, let's underline and identify the describing words. Little, clear and warm. There's little again. Uh, faster, big. After big, we have fat. Tiny. Raisa, can you please help Irina? Before tiny was big fat. Yes. So after tiny, what do we have? Irina, did you find another word? If we have a new one, of course. I didn't find one. I don't know if okay. there is. Okay, let's go further. So the ones that we underlined were adjectives. The adjectives describe objects people and animals and they always come immediately before the noun. We have here an example, a red balloon. Balloon is a noun and the word red is an adjective. So the adjectives have different forms. They are positive, comparative and superlative. One way to describe a person or thing is by saying they have more of a particular quality than someone or something else. To do this, 
we use comparative adjectives, which are formed either by adding ER at the end of the adjective or placing more before it. We have here two examples. This piece of cake is bigger than that one. She is more intelligent than her sister. The second rule is also possible to describe someone or something by saying they have more of a particular quality than any other. We do this by using superlative adjectives, formed by adding the article the before the adjective and est at the end or adding the most before the adjective. For example, this is the biggest piece of cake. She is the most intelligent woman I have ever met. We have some rules about forming comparatives and superlatives. So, for comparatives, one syllable adjectives generally form the comparative by adding er at the end of the adjective. Some things you need to consider is if a one syllable adjective ends with the consonant vowel consonant combination, the second vowel must be doubled before adding er. For example, thin thinner, big, bigger. If the one-syllable adjective ends in a silent E, only R should be added at the end of the adjective, instead of ER. For example, nice, nicer, wide, wider. We add the word more before the adjective when it has more than one syllable or to compare to different adjectives. The icing was supposed to be pink and white, but it looked more red than pink. That sofa might look nice, but this one is more comfortable. If the adjective ends in a consonant followed by Y, the Y is replaced by an I before adding ER. For example, sunny, sunnier, happy, happier. Regarding superlatives, one syllable adjectives generally form the superlative by adding the before the adjective and est at the end of the adjective. Some things you need to consider. If a one syllable adjective ends with a consonant vowel consonant combination, the second vowel must be doubled before adding est. For example, thin, the thinnest, big, the biggest. If the one syllable adjective ends in a silent e, only ST should be added at the end of the adjective instead of EST. For example, nice, the nicest, wide, the widest. We add the most before the adjective when it has more than one syllable. That is the most beautiful dress I've seen. That sofa is the most comfortable in the store. The adjective ends in a consonant followed by Y. The Y is replaced by an I before adding EST. For example, sunny, the sunniest, happy, the happiest. The following adjectives have irregular comparative and superlative forms. I have here some examples. So the positive side is here. We have good, the comparative for good is better, and the superlative, the best. For bad, we have worse, the worst, we can't say better or the baddest. It's wrong. Far, farther, or the farthest. The adjectives ill and well, describing bad and good health, have irregular comparative forms. The comparative of ill is worse, and the comparative of well is better. For example, she's feeling better, or she's feeling much better, or worse today. In our second part, uh, in our comparative adjectives lesson, we will introduce and practice the structure of comparative adjectives. For example, we have ten plus object pronoun, uh, she is taller than him, and the comparative adjective than plus subject pronoun plus verb, she is taller than he is. Irina, which expression goes best with the picture? She is taller than him. She is taller than him. So this one is the best. Okay? Raisa, yes. do you have another opinion? No. Okay. What comment do you have regarding this picture? 
I mean, using a comparative form. Like, uh, do you think uh, she's uh, uh, more beautiful than him? Yes, she also has longer hair than him. And uh, more. And okay, go on. She's thinner than him. Okay, Raisa, okay. have a look at this side. We have to use the adjectives to make at least two comparisons. Okay, using them we have cheap, expensive, big, small, tall and short. Do you know their meanings? In Romanian, I mean. Yes. The steak is cheaper than the shrimps. The shrimps are more expensive than the chicken. Uh, Russia is bigger than Australia. China is smaller than Russia. A giraffe is taller than a horse. A horse is shorter than an elephant. Very well. What about you, Irina? Can you make sentences? Um, um, the steak is more expensive than the shrimps. The chicken is cheaper than the shrimps. Russia is bigger than Australia. Australia is smaller than Russia. Elephant is shorter than the giraffe. The giraffe is taller than the horse. Okay, thank you. Here, we will introduce and practice the structure of us plus base adjective plus us to show comparisons of equality. We have here an example. This house is as large as the other house. Raisa, what do you think? On the left side, I mean. We have here the words. Let's make some sentences. Apples as are as sweet as pears. Grapes are as delicious as apples. Grapes are healthier than pears. A pumpkin is healthier than grapes. A lemon is more sour than a pumpkin. Okay, Irina, and for this? The Eiffel Tower is as busy as the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is as beautiful as the Eiffel Tower. London Wheel is more interesting than the Statue of Liberty. The London Wheel is as expensive as the Eiffel Tower. Okay, thank you. Raisa, what's your opinion about these landmarks? I think the London is more energetic than the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is as beautiful as the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is as crowded as the Eiffel Tower. Okay, thank the you. Statue Okay, so in our comparative adjective series, we introduce several additional constructions to express comparisons. We introduce us plus adjective plus us noun for everyday expressions. We have here an example as busy as a bee, and we introduce the use of modifiers such as just nearly almost. I mean, us plus adjective plus us. Movie are just as important as books. Irina, can you give me three examples of expressions that have the structure of us plus adjective plus us and noun? Movies are as fun as um, books. The lesson is almost as interesting as the last one. Is almost as interesting as the last one. Yes. Okay. And your last example? This trip is nearly as um, Price, expensive can you please? as the last one. As expensive as the last one. What about your examples, Raisa? 
my clothes are just as dirty as this. The painting is almost as beautiful as the view. Painting is almost as beautiful as the view. Yes. Right? Okay. This house is as big as the other one. This house is as big as the other one. Very interesting. Have you heard about the expression as quiet as a mouse? You can no. use. You can use here. Yes, we have the example as busy as a bee, as quiet as a mouse, as courageous as a lion, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's go further. In this part, we'll introduce the structures of repeating comparatives. It grew bigger and bigger. We also introduce more modifiers to make comparisons, a lot, a bit, and far, and provide ample practice for all of our comparative structures. We have here, on the left side, his face got redder and redder. Which sentence matches the picture, Irina? Have a look. The sun shone brighter and brighter. So, uh, the sun shone brighter and brighter. Okay, yes, indeed. We have here repeating a comparative. We can repeat a comparative to show that something is changing continuously. Raisa, we have here an example uh, with a kind of fish, well, a shark. It grew bigger and bigger and it got faster and faster and it became more and more scary. Can you give me another example of repeating comparatives? It grew stronger and stronger. It became... Thinner and thinner. It grew longer and longer. Mm -hmm. Irina, can you give me your example? She grew taller and taller and got uh, more and more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very well. Now we have an activity, live in the capital. So, I have found as a teacher that most of my students have no idea at all of what life is really like in the countryside, and neither do I, actually. However, most people will have something to say about life in the capital city versus life in another part of the country. So, you will work in pairs like a short debate, okay? Uh, Raisa, you will represent the people that live in the, cap in the capital of your country. So, in Bucharest, or I don't know, you may choose another capital city. And the other part is Irina, and will represent the people that live in the countryside. Okay? So, you have to prepare several reasons and compare life there. I mean, advantages and disadvantages. Okay? And at the end of this little debate, we will see who was the most convincing. Raisa, are you ready? Yes. Okay, start. I think life in the capital city of a country is more exciting than living outside the capital city because you have more things to do. And, for example, you have more restaurants, you can socialize more with a lot of people, you can lot you can learn a lot more from other people and visit more. Okay, thank you. Great arguments. What about you, Rina? Uh, life in the countryside is more relaxing than life in the capital because um, there is um, a quiet space and you're surrounded by nature well from my point of view you did great so well the most convincing i think is raisa because we all live 
in a capital city and we are not uh, keen on countryside, let's say. <laughs> now we have another activity. Uh, the coldest place I have been to. So this part of our presentation it goes very well with the present perfect because is the time for superlative. We have here an example. The best film I have ever seen was, I don't know, Father Part Time from my point of view. Uh, Raisa, the coldest place I have been to was? The coldest place I've been to was the mountain. Okay, the hottest place I have ever been or, ha or I have visited was? The beach. Okay, the... Worst storm I have ever seen was in? My capital city. Uh, the strangest weather I have ever experienced was? In another town. Mm -hmm. About the emotional experiences, Irina. Let's see. The most frightened I've ever been? Uh, was when I surrounded by dogs. Okay. The happiest moment I've ever had? Was on my birthday. The most nervous I've ever been? Was before an important exam. Okay, let's go further. So, we think that we have provided a very comprehensive lesson to cover comparative and superlative adjectives. So let us know if you have had success using your lesson and do not forget to follow us on social media. Thank you girls. Thank you, Raisa. Thank you, Rina. You did great. Thank so, you. see you on Monday. Goodbye and thank you for watching.